Uh, today, uh, I'm very happy to announce uh, the speaker, Adriano Tomasini from the University of Parma, who will be speaking about the bar harmonic forms on compact, almost emission manifolds. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me at this uh, beautiful uh, uh, seminar online. So uh, I'm very honored to be here. <clears throat> and uh, uh, so, uh, first of all, I, will, I would like to, to talk about some recent results I got in a joint paper with uh, um, Nicoletta Tardini of the University of Parma. And uh, concerning the, the study of uh, harmonic forms on almost complex uh, manifolds, more precisely on almost emission manifolds, compact emission manifolds. Uh, Adriano, so, uh, you, need to, you need to share your uh, slides or screen. You stop sharing. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, no problem. OK, it's OK? Mm -hmm. Yeah. OK. And um, <clears throat> so uh, for, for in this uh, talk, uh, J will be a non-integrable, basically non-integrable, almost complex structure, structure on, on, uh, on a compact uh, manifold. So before uh, describing exactly what, uh, what uh, are the results uh, we obtained, uh, let us start with some uh, general motivation in order to study these uh, kind of uh, topics. So first of all, uh, uh, we will denote by uh, MJ a compact a complex manifold if we start for the moment with a compact complex manifold. Uh, that is, uh, M is a two-dimensional compact manifold uh, uh, endowed with a smooth uh, one-one tensor field J, uh, such that uh, satisfying J square is minus the identity, uh, plus uh, uh, an integrability condition that is the Nynoise te tensor of J, which is the one-two tensor uh, defined as by the following formula. Uh, so requiring that nj is equal to zero. This is a well-known uh, notion of complex structure. And uh, 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 the presence of j um, allows to, um, to consider the decomposition of the space of uh, complex k forms on M as the direct sum of pq forms. But this uh, is just uh, induced by the presence of j. So is a uh, an almost complex uh, uh, feature, okay? And, uh, uh, but in the complex case, or in the integrable case, uh, the exterior uh, differential um, splits as the, the sum of two differential operators, namely del and del bar. Okay, this means that uh, the differ exterior differential of uh, a PQ form belong, belongs to P, P plus one Q plus P Q plus one. So D is equal to del plus the bar. And of course, uh, it is uh, uh, possible in this case, uh, uh, where del and the bar are the projection uh, are the P plus one Q respectively, P Q plus one composition, uh, com um, um, sorry, um, components of the zero derivative of the form. Uh, since d square is equal to zero, then we obtain that del square, del bar square, and del and del bar anti commute. Anti -commute. And so uh, it is well known that uh, we can consider uh, special uh, cohomologies associated to, the, to these uh, differential operators. The, the, the most famous maybe is the Dolbo cohomology of the complex manifold defined as the kernel of the del bar operator module, the image of the del bar operator. And uh, there are other uh, cohomologies as the Bochern and the Apley cohomologies, but I don't want to define uh, them because uh, in a moment uh, uh, we will uh, <coughs> talk about uh, uh, Dolbo, just Dolbo harmonic forms. So again, in the complex case, uh, uh, if we fix uh, a J emission metric on the manifold and we assume that uh, uh, M is compact, 
then uh, uh, we can uh, <coughs> consider uh, a, a suitable lytic differential operator constructed with the del bar and del bar star operator. And uh, the, the kernel of uh, uh, this differential operator, which turns to be a lytic, is isomorphic to the um, Dolbo uh, cohomology uh, group. And uh, in particular, uh, uh, the bulk homology groups are, uh, of, have a finite dimension. This is well known. And of course, uh, uh, one can know that uh, if we change, uh, we fix another J. Misha metric, uh, we obtain again uh, another, of course, uh, elliptic differential operator associated to G. But it, the kernel, it is always isomorphic to the <coughs> to the Dolbo cohomology group. So in other words, it is a complex invariant. So the dimension of the kernel uh, uh, of a such uh, uh, elliptic differential operator is a complex invariant. Now we, we switch to the non-integrable case. So many things change in this uh, context. Uh, so for instance, uh, start with the, starting with the differential uh, operator, D, uh, D uh, splits as the sum of uh, mi, del, del bar, and mi bar, where del and del bar are, the, are previously are defined as previous, but mi and mi bar are respectively the mm, two minus one component and, uh, uh, sorry, p plus two q minus one component and p minus one q plus two uh, component of the zero derivative of, uh, of the p q form. Basically, mi as the as as um, by degree two minus one and mu bar as uh, by degree minus one and two. And of course, uh, uh, n j is equal to zero if and only if uh, mi is zero. And uh, so, in other words, uh, this is the Newlander Nuremberg theorem. Okay. Unfortunately, uh, when uh, when we take we consider the uh, d square which is equal to zero, then we can derive uh, some useful uh, um, <clears throat> relations involving the operator mi, del, del bar, and mu bar. And as, you, as we can see, uh, the third line, uh, del square is no more zero, del bar square is no more zero. And uh, this uh, is equivalent to say that the del square or del bar square equal zero is equivalent to say that uh, the almost complex structure is integrable. So, in, in other words, uh, in the <clears throat> in the almost complex setting, uh, we have no uh, cohomology associated to del bar. So, we cannot speak about uh, Dolbo cohomology. There are uh, uh, some possible, uh, very recent uh, approach to define uh, Dolbo cohomology in the almost complex setting. Uh, this uh, uh, paper uh, um, is by the paper by uh, um, Chirici and uh, Wilson. They they gave a definition of the bulk homology in the almost complex setting. Uh, previously, uh, at the end of uh, so around uh, 2009 2010, uh, Tian Jun Li and uh, Wei Zhang. Uh, uh, defined the, the um, Dolbo, not exactly Dolbo cohomology, but they, they gave a definition of uh, Dolbo, uh, of, um, sorry, of uh, cohomology uh, adapted to the uh, almost complex structure. They, they call H plus and H minus cohomology group, which are uh, subgroups of uh, the DRAM, second DRAM cohomology group. There's a and, uh, question. Can I ask a question? Yes, sure. Um, it, it's a question in, in chat, but it's, it's a question which also occurred to me. In the decomposition of D, uh, why are there just these four summons? Uh, why is there no components? So it's a question by Alessandro Caratenuto. Why are there no components, for example, in degree P plus 3, comma Q minus 2? Oh, you're right. That's, uh, that's because uh, you see when uh, <clears throat> When you have a, 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 a complex structure, an almost com in an integrable, almost complex stru structure, you have uh, holomorphic coordinates. So this means that the PQ form you can uh, you can write the PQ form as a, 
a combination of function dz and dz bar, the p dz and q dz bar. Then when you take the uh, zero der derivative, uh, you have just to differentiate the, the coefficients, which are functions, and so you have uh, one zero and zero one component. In the case of uh, uh, an, an almost complex structure, which is not integrable, you have no uh, holomorphic coordinates. Nevertheless, you can uh, use uh, one zero and zero one co co frame. In that case, you have to differentiate uh, the coefficients, which uh, uh, gives uh, one zero and zero one degree. And then you take the wedge with uh, one zero uh, p times and zero one q times. And then you have to take the differential of one zero. The differential of one zero, in the integrable case, you have zero because uh, the one zero co-frame is dz and zero one co-frame is dz bar. But here you have no holomorphic coordinates. So you have to differentiate uh, one zero and you get uh, two zero, one one and zero two, that's it. And the same for the, for the zero one uh, uh, when you differentiate zero one, okay? So okay. the difference here is that you have no holomorphic coordinates, and so you have to differentiate one zero and zero one, and then when you differentiate the one zero form, you get uh, all possible degrees: two zero, one one, and zero two. That's it. <clears throat> okay, so in the non-integrable case, um, you have no double cohomology. Okay, nevertheless, uh, it is uh, uh, it makes sense. Uh, to, um, to consider the, uh, the kernel of a, a suitable, uh, the same uh, suitable uh, differential, elliptic differential operator. To be more precise, uh, so we denote by mj an almost complex manifold. So j is not integrable. And j is a, a J-emission metric. Uh, that is, j uh, is a, an isometry, a G isometry. And uh, of course, we can uh, consider the Hodge star, uh, C-linear Hodge star operator associated to G. So we have the decomposition uh, of, uh, in PQ forms. So this, the C-linear Hodge star operator uh, is defined from PQ forms to N minus P, N minus P, N minus Q, sorry, N minus P. And we consider the volume form given by the fundamental form omega N omega n <clears throat> up to a constant, and uh, where omega is the fundamental form of the mm, j emission metric. And now we can consider the <clears throat> analogous of dolbo laplace in the complex uh, setting. Delta del bar is the del bar del bar star plus del bar star del bar, where del bar star is defined as minus star del star. We know that uh, delta del bar uh, is a second-order elliptic differential operator, uh, even if the almost complex structure is not, in, is not integrable. So this is important because, uh, of course, there will be a first-order part, but the second-order the second order part uh, is still elliptic. So this is important because uh, we can uh, consider the space uh, given by the intersection between the kernel of the <clears throat> this operator, which is elliptic, with the, um, PQ, the space of PQ forms. Of course, uh, since we are considering uh, compact manifolds, so the space uh, H uh, PQ is a, a C vector space of finite dimension. So, in other words, uh, this, uh, mm, this uh, uh, vector space in the, in the integral case, uh, it turns uh, uh, to be isomorphic to the Dolbo cohomology. In the non almost complex setting, uh, we have no cohomological meaning, but it is uh, well defined in the sense that, that uh, it is a vector space of finite dimension. And so, uh, imitating the complex case, uh, we can uh, consider the, 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 the following definition, the Hodge numbers of the almost emission manifolds, M, J, G, as the, the dimension of uh, H, uh, P, Q, del bar. Um, a first natural question, which is, uh, in some sense, deep, uh, was formulated by 
first of all, by <coughs> by Irzebruck and then by Kodari and Spencer. Of course, uh, as we noticed before, if J is integral, then uh, uh, by complex Hodge theory, we have this uh, well-known isomorphism. And uh, uh, so, as uh, anticipated, uh, uh, these numbers, uh, the Hodge numbers, uh, are exactly complex invariant. So, do not depend on the choice of the emission metric. This for a J integral. And now we come to the uh, um, question by Kodari and Spencer, and here's Brook. Uh, assume that uh, MJ is a compact, almost complex manifold with MJ different from zero. The question is very uh, clear. Are uh, the uh, Hodge numbers metric independent as uh, it happens in the complex set? In the complex setting, the Hodge numbers are, are exactly the dimension of, of a PQ Dolbock homology group. So this is a question uh, uh, raised by Hirzbruck uh, in uh, 54 and then uh, restated by Kodari and Spencer. And uh, some easy uh, remarks. Uh, uh, if you will consider HP0 okay, and HPN, then uh, you see HP0 is a, a, an almost complex invariant, is an almost complex invariant, because uh, when we consider uh, the operator uh, the Laplacian, delta del bar, uh, is formed uh, by del bar and del bar star. So an easy computation shows that uh, a form belongs to the PQ form belongs uh, uh, to the kernel of delta del bar if and only if is del bar closed and del bar star closed okay so you see when we take del, del bar uh, del bar increases of one the degree in q and del bar star decreases uh, the uh, of one the degree in q so if we start with the p0 by degree reasons automatically this is del bar star closed so the, the only relevant equation we have to consider is the equation del bar equals zero. But del bar involves only the complex, the almost complex structure. So HP0 is an almost complex invariant. Accordingly, by duality, HPN del bar is an almost complex invariant. And this is what we resume. For any given uh, PQ form, phi belongs to the kernel of delta del bar if and only if it is del bar closed and del bar star closed. Okay, so this is uh, uh, quite uh, <clears throat> clear. And now we, we come to the very uh, nice and beautiful uh, result recently obtained by Holt and Zhang. Uh, it is uh, posted on archive. They proved that in some sense, the answer to the question by Kodaria, Kodaria and Spencer is showing that uh, if we consider uh, the Kodaria Thurston manifold X, they are able to, uh, to show that H01 del bar uh, varies with different choices of uh, emission metrics. In other words, uh, H01 can be arbitrarily large. On, uh, on, uh, on the Kodaria Thurston manifold, varying uh, the metric. Okay? To be more precise, they, they consider the families of almost scalar metrics. So the Kodaria Thurston manifold uh, is one of the first uh, main examples of a uh, uh, four dimensional, com compact four dimensional manifold, which has a symplectic structure, which has a uh, complex structure, but has no Keller structure. So in other words, symplectic and complex structure are not related, they're not compatible, cannot be compatible. Nevertheless, they, they answer to the question by Kodari and Spencer showing this, uh, uh, constructing explicitly the, um, <clears throat> this uh, family of almost Keller metrics. And what is uh, very important in, the, in, the, in their approach is that they had to solve explicitly, they work uh, in, 
uh, since uh, this is a <coughs> this uh, manifold is uh, um, parallelizable, so it has a, a global coframe. So they work uh, in uh, globally with a, a global coframe, and the the form are expressed in this global coframe. Of course, the, the coefficients are functions which uh, <coughs> are periodic uh, with respect to the special uh, rule, uh, which is uh, uh, according to the um, <coughs> to the um, compass subgroup, uh, uh, which gives the uh, codaria tarston manifold. Sorry, the um, uniform discrete subgroup. So the codaria tarston manifold is obtained as a compact quotient of uh, the Eisenberg group uh, with the uh, uniform discrete subgroup times the S1. So they work. Uh, low, uh, we go. Uh, they work. They use a Fourier series, and they they are able to to show to compute by hands uh, uh, the dimension of H zero one. But the computation are very are very hard. Are very difficult to 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 do because they have to solve uh, uh, basically um, <clears throat> PD the differential uh, partial differential equation systems. Uh, in terms of the uh, Fourier coefficient. So to resume, uh, if uh, we consider a, a four-dimensional almost complex manifold, okay. So uh, <coughs> we have, uh, according to what we we said before, we have uh, um, h two zero, h one zero, h zero zero, are g independent, are metric independent. So the green. Uh, uh, the green are metric independent. Uh, the, um, <clears throat> the red are unknown. And uh, for H11 del bar, uh, if G is almost scalar, then we have uh, um, the, dim sorry, the dimension of, uh, of um, the kernel, sorry, the 1 1 form, of, which are uh, the Bohr harmonic. Uh, the dimension of this space is exactly equal to B minus plus one, where B minus is the dimension of the harmonic anti self dual harmonic forms. Okay. And uh, in particular, the last result uh, is uh, uh, proved by Holt and Zhang. Uh, and the proof uh, is quite uh, easy in the sense that they use the theory of four dimensional manifold and uh, the decomposition of one one forms. Uh, for H21 and H01, uh, um, we, we, we don't know, OK? At least uh, for H01, uh, uh, so we know that uh, can be arbitrary large, as showed by, shown by uh, Holt and Zhang. So in other words, uh, <clears throat> now we focus on H11 del bar because uh, as you can see, H11 del bar is equal to my B minus plus one when G is almost scalar. So the natural question is what we can say uh, for uh, uh, H11 when G is an almost emission matrix? So this is the question. Okay, so... Uh, before to to describe exactly what we we got, uh, uh, we have we have some uh, um, differences mm, between the almost scalar and the scalar case. When we have a compact scalar manifold, uh, then the Hodge numbers are invariant under small deformation of the complex structure. And this, of course, is no more true. And uh, <clears throat> the Hodge numbers. Uh, are bounded by the Betty numbers because we have the uh, sum of HPQ del bar equal to the Betty K Betty number. Okay. Uh, as we uh, we said, uh, just a few words about the the uh, the um, the methods of the proof of Holt and Jung. They start with the elliptic PD system given by del bar phi and del bar star uh, phi equals zero where phi is zero one form on the Kodaira tarston manifold. And then they use the Fourier analysis uh, on the Kodaira tarston manifold, getting an ordinary differential equation system of a first order 
on the Fourier coefficients of uh, the form phi. So this is a, a quite direct to, uh, to construct, uh, but to do the computation, they need some uh, deep uh, analysis. Okay, now we, we turn to the problem of uh, computing H11 del bar in general. And uh, Holt and Jung ask uh, uh, the following. So assume that uh, MJ is a compact almost four dimensional manifold, okay? Uh, admitting uh, an almost scalar structure. This is the, the basic question they, they ask. Uh, they ask, uh, does it have a non almost scalar emission metric uh, such that H11 uh, is different from B minus plus one? Because remember that uh, if the metric is almost scalar, and then they prove that H11 is exactly B minus plus one. So they asked, assume that uh, MJ has a scalar, almost scalar structure. Can you find another emission metric such that uh, H11 del bar is different from, from B minus plus one? Okay, and now we, we answer to this question. And uh, so first of all, uh, we uh, consider uh, the, um, <clears throat> uh, the following lemma, which is uh, quite uh, simple, but it is uh, uh, useful. So in other words, uh, if uh, this is a general lemma in 2 dimension, so assume that M to N uh, J is a 2 dimensional compact, almost complex manifold. And then if uh, P plus Q is equal to N, a complex dimension, then uh, HPQ del bar is a conformal invariant of the over emission matrix. So in other words, uh, this means that if we do a conformal change of the metric, then uh, HPQ does not change. And this is quite uh, direct, straightforward to prove because if we consider the fundamental form omega of a J emission metric, then uh, any a conformal change uh, G tilde of G, uh, if we consider the uh, fundamental form omega tilde is related to the omega by a fi positive function F, okay? So let's say omega tilde is F omega. And uh, now it, it direct computation shows that the Hodge star associated to omega tilde differs from the Hodge star associated to omega by uh, uh, f to the power n minus p minus q. And so this means that if we uh, impose that, that uh, psi uh, belongs to the kernel of uh, the Dolbola uh, uh, Laplacian with respect to g, g tilde, this means that del bar psi is equal to zero, del bar uh, del star omega tilde psi equal to zero, and this is equal to say that the, the del bar psi and del of this is equal to zero. So if uh, p plus q equal n, we have uh, that uh, psi belongs to the kernel of uh, del, uh, del bar with respect to g, g tilde, if and only if psi belongs to the kernel of the delta del bar with respect to g. And so these numbers are conformal invariants if p plus q is n. In particular, this lemma is quite useful uh, when we are uh, in, uh, in H11 for a four-dimensional manifold, because uh, this means exactly that H11 is a conformal invariant uh, on, on a four-dimensional uh, manifold, compact four-dimensional manifold, almost initial manifold. <clears throat> okay, so um, now... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, this corollary is a combination of the previous lemma and the result by Holt and Zhang, because uh, assume that M4 is a, a compact, almost complex manifold of dimension four, and assume that G, G, G sorry, is a G emission metric, which is conformally equivalent to an almost scalar metric. Then H11, with the respect to this new, to the conformal, sorry, uh, to, the, to the metric G, which is conformally equivalent to an almost scalar metric, then H11 is B minus plus one, okay? This is a, an easy combination of the last lemma and the result by jump and hold. 
Okay, and now we have uh, we need uh, the following definition before I state uh, our main result. So uh, we have the definition of a strictly locally conformally Keller. So an emission metric on a two-dimensional uh, almost complex manifold is said to be strictly locally conformally Keller if the exterior derivative of the fundamental form of G is the wedge product of uh, theta with uh, omega, where theta is a declosed, non the exact one form. Okay, so in other words, uh, when uh, we take the exterior derivative, we get theta wedge omega, and uh, theta is one form, of course, and uh, where theta is declosed. Of course, uh, non the exact. This means strictly locally. Uh, if uh, theta is the exact, then we say that uh, G is globally conformally Keller. And this means that uh, the, metric, the metric we are considering uh, is uh, globally conformal to a Keller metric on the, man on the manifold. Okay? So we are interested in strictly locally conformal. And now we, we can state our uh, uh, result. Assume that uh, we have a uh, a four dimensional uh, uh, compact, uh, almost uh, complex manifold, and assume that G is a strictly locally conformally Keller metric. Then H11 del bar is exactly B minus. So, as uh, we can see, uh, when we have a strictly locally conformally, H11. Uh, 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 reach the the minimum because uh, <clears throat> as we will see in a moment. So H11 is exactly B minus. Remember that in the Keller case, in the almost Keller case, H11 is B minus plus one. Okay. And uh, so this is a. Uh, this is a this result any conformally, strictly locally conformally Keller metric. Um, and now we have the second uh, result. Assume that M4J uh, is a compact, almost complex manifold, uh, four dimension, and G, a J emission metric. Then if J is globally conformally Keller, globally means that uh, theta, is the exact, in particular, if, uh, if it is Keller, then H11 is B minus one plus one. If omega is strictly locally conformally Keller, then we have H minus H11 equal B minus. So we have these two behavior. Globally conformally Keller is like the almost Keller case. Strictly locally conformally Keller is exactly B minus. So these uh, results, um, uh, sh uh, show that, uh, mm. in some sense, uh, uh, this gives, uh, sorry, uh, an answer to the uh, question by Holt and Zhang, and give an answer to the question by Kodaira and Spencer Hirzbruck uh, for H11. Because we remember that uh, Holt and Zhang proved that for almost Keller, we, uh, we have uh, H11 B minus plus one. We, now we, can say that for strictly locally conformally Keller, we have H11 equal B minus. Of course, we can uh, give uh, explicit examples of strictly locally conformally Keller uh, matrix on compact four dimensional manifold. Okay, so this is, uh, and as uh, uh, we, uh, we described uh, before, so H11. Uh, is always greater or equal than B minus, okay? So in other words, uh, the theorem two shows that uh, the minimum of H11 is reached on uh, strictly locally conformally Keller metrics, okay? Because uh, this inequality is always true on any, for any J emission metric. Okay, so this is uh, uh, quite uh, uh, simple. And uh, 
with just uh, one word about the proof of uh, our results. So our results uh, relies on the <clears throat> Godushon uh, results uh, showing, uh, stating that um, <clears throat> if we have a compact, almost a niche manifold, the, the Godushon result holds in any dimension. So we can state in any dimension. If we have a 20 dimensional compact, uh, almost a niche manifold, then we can, uh, Uh, change, we can make a conformal change and we can find in any conformal class of the metric uh, a representative uh, such that uh, uh, del del bar DDC of the, the fundamental form is zero, uh, the fundamental form to the n minus one. So in four dimensional, this means that if we start with the J emission metric G, Then we can find the conformal change such that the new metric has uh, uh, the fundamental form which satisfies uh, d dc omega equals zero. This is a very important theorem uh, by Godushon uh, at the end of 70s, 77, I guess. And uh, it is uh, uh, um, a fundamental result we use in the proof of, uh, of uh, our results. And, uh, and now I prefer to, to give some explicit example to, to describe what kind of computation uh, one should uh, perform uh, in general. So let us describe exactly uh, the Kodaira Tarston manifold. So we consider the, Heisen, the real Heisenberg group. Uh, with the upper triangular matrices uh, uh, with real entries, three by three ma upper triangular matrices. And uh, assume that uh, we consider the uh, uniform discrete subgroup of uh, H3R uh, uh, formed by matrices in H3 with uh, integral entries. And uh, so we can consider H3R uh, modulo gamma times S1, and this is a compact four-dimensional manifold. As uh, uh, we observed before, uh, the um, uh, kodaira tarson manifold admit uh, complex, both complex and simplex structure, but um, it has no Kähler structure. And uh, Uh, so uh, consider x1, x2, and x3 global coordinates on H3R and uh, x4 global coordinates coordinate on R on, on R. <clears throat> Then we can form the following uh, four uh, uh, differential forms, uh, which are uh, uh, left invariant. Okay, so dx1, dx2, dx3 minus x1, dx2, and dx4. And so, uh, since I grow a left invariant, uh, they, uh, the following forms uh, give uh, a rise to a global co-frame on M, okay? And uh, it's easy to, to see that uh, the only non-flat, uh, non-closed, sorry, uh, form is E3, and the E3 is uh, minus C1 by G2. So uh, we know that uh, the kodaira tarston manifold B1 is uh, three and B2 is four. And so we, it is very immediate to, uh, to check that H2 is equal to A13 A1, minus two, four, where A13 minus C24 means A1 where G3 minus C2 where G4 and so on. So we have this four cohomology classes. And uh, again, uh, these uh, uh, um, forms are harmonic. I mean, uh, harmonic with the Hodge Laplacian operator associated to the uh, natural Riemannian metric given by EI uh, tensor EI. Okay, so this is uh, uh, very well known. Uh, uh, Looking at the cohomology in group H2, uh, one can detect that uh, the space of D harmonic anti self dual forms is given by E1 uh, 3 plus E2 4 and 1 uh, 4 minus 2 3. 
So D minus is two, okay? And uh, uh, now we are able to give uh, an example we are looking for. So <clears throat> in other words, we, we consider, uh, take for the, uh, take this uh, form E1 plus A E4 plus I3 and E2 plus I4. If uh, we allow uh, to be alpha equal zero, uh, A equal zero, sorry, then we get uh, an almost complex structure. And uh, we deform this almost complex structure uh, which uh, for A equals zero is exactly a normal scalar structure. So we deform uh, this uh, uh, natural almost scalar structure, taking this, uh, in inserting this uh, para real parameter A, phi one A and phi two A. And so this is, uh, uh, this, uh, is a one parameter family of almost complex structures on X. And if we take the X zero derivative, uh, we obtain that the second uh, form uh, is closed because d2 and d4 is zero. The first d1 is zero and d4 is zero, but we have d3, which is not zero. And so we, uh, we an easy computation gives that d phi one is equal to, okay? And uh, we see that uh, j a is not integral for any given a, because uh, you see we have, uh, we have uh, a zero two component uh, in the X zero derivative of one zero four. So this is not integrable. And uh, now we can form uh, the natural emission structure associated to, to this uh, uh, almost complex structure JA, basically is phi one phi one bar plus phi two phi two bar, of course, phi A, right? And this is positive form. Uh, of type one one by definition, and we compute uh, the omega a is i a phi one two two bar minus i a phi two one bar two bar. So you see when uh, a equals zero, the omega is zero. For a different from zero, the omega is not almost is not close. So for a, for a different from zero, the almost complex structure is not almost scalar. Okay. And so the form theta is easily computed is uh, a over two phi one plus phi one bar, okay? And uh, <clears throat> and this shows that uh, d theta is zero, okay? And uh, so theta is the, um, Is not, uh, um, is not the exact. And so omega A is uh, strictly locally conformally care. Okay? And so this means that uh, um, J A for a square less uh, um, than one, J A is uh, admits a compatible almost care metric, okay? which given by omega tilde, omega a plus a over two uh, phi one two bar minus a over two phi two one bar is J emission such that d omega tilde is zero. And uh, uh, it is uh, strictly conformally Keller. So we have, in other words, an almost complex structure which admits Keller matrix and uh, we construct uh, omega a, which is strictly locally conformal Keller. And so we answered uh, by, by our result, uh, we know that H11 is B, each, uh, is uh, B minus equal to, for A different from zero, and H11 uh, with respect to the omega tilde is three. So we answer to the question by Holt, Holt and Zhang. We show that uh, H11 can change uh, if the metric is different from the almost scalar case, um, for the from the almost scalar case, and so uh, this uh, uh, gives an answer to the uh, question by Holt and Jung, and also give an answer to the here's the Brook Codarian Spencer problem because for H11 we constructed two metrics for, for which H11 is two and H11 is three, 
So H11 in principle can change, as uh, asked by uh, Kodaira, uh, Spence, and Hirzbrook. Okay, so this is uh, uh, again. I want to to stress that um, now, as uh, as as I, I would like to uh, to show, uh, one can can try in principle uh, to uh, write down explicitly the PDE system um, imposing uh, that uh, one one form is uh, del bar closed and uh, del bar star closed. Okay, so this means that we have to consider, start with the given one one form, A, B, L, and M are the coefficients, which are functions on X. Okay, so if we impose, uh, I want to <clears throat> denote by B1 and B2 the one zero global frame dual to phi one A and phi two A. Okay, basically, if we think to the uh, usual almost uh, complex, so, sorry, the complex, usual complex structure on Cn, uh, B1 and B2 on C2, sorry, are exactly DZ1 and DZ2, the uh, not the Cauchy Riemann, DZ bar and the Cauchy Riemann rate. Okay, DZ1 and DZ2, the complex uh, the differential operator. <clears throat> Here we, we have to take uh, an A1 minus A3 and so on. And uh, uh, at this point, um, if we impose that uh, C belongs to the kernel of H11, to the kernel, sorry, of delta del bar on uh, 11 forms, we obtain this uh, um, partial differential equation system. And uh, if we try to solve directly, uh, it's very difficult to, to solve by hands. Uh, you can uh, use uh, Fourier series, you can uh, use uh, um, co uh, Fourier coefficients, and so you get uh, um, uh, ordinary differential equation system on the coefficients on A, on the Fourier coefficients of the function A, B, L, M, but it's very hard to solve. Directly. Fortunately, here we know that H11 uh, for a, a diff, for the real parameter a different from zero, H11 is two, the dimension, so it's two. So we can uh, we can uh, detect easily the solutions because we know the expected dimension. But otherwise, if we we try to solve, uh, at least I, we cannot uh, success. Okay. Since we, we know the expected dimension, here we can uh, easily conclude that uh, H11 del bar omega A is the uh, complex vector space spanned by uh, these two forms. Okay? Sorry. And so this is two dimensional. And uh, so we can uh, <clears throat> resume uh, the previous results by saying that the Kodaya Thurston manifold. Uh, Endowed with the almost complex, the family of uh, the almost complex structure JA, uh, constructed as above, uh, admits uh, both almost scalar matrix and strictly locally conformal scalar matrix. So the behavior of H11 uh, uh, is uh, two, uh, sorry, is three for, uh, for the almost scalar matrix and uh, two for strictly locally conformal scalar. Anyway, H11 is always uh, greater or equal than B minus, which is equal to. Of course, the interesting question should be, can we uh, say something of different uh, if we consider a, a matrix which is not uh, uh, neither locally conformally, strictly locally conformally scalar or uh, almost scalar. But as you, <clears throat> you can imagine, um, the computation becomes uh, very hard, much more harder uh, without assuming that Keller or uh, locally, strictly locally conformal Keller. Okay, then uh, um, I think I can stop here. We have uh, just uh, uh, one can define uh, also non left invariant emission structure on the Kodaria Tarsom manifold, 
the computation uh, are much more complicated, uh, but again, we can use the, our result uh, to, uh, to have uh, the expected dimension. And so we can just uh, uh, conclude uh, by the expected dimension and we can, we can also uh, compute the, <clears throat> the space of harmonic forms of type uh, one one. Okay, I think I can stop here and uh, thanks for your attention. Well, oh, thanks a lot. Okay. Yes, yeah, so are there any questions? Sorry, you can see me or uh, you? Uh, we cannot I see you. We just see it like oh. it's like the camera is covered or something. Oh, sorry. Uh, now? No. Nope. I, I can I can see how to to stop the, the share. Uh, the, the share is, seems stopped, but we still cannot see your picture. Now? <laughs> no. Sorry. Yeah, but yeah, are, are there any questions? Maybe I have a quick question just regarding this uh, Hitzbruch, Kodaira, Spencer uh, question. Uh, so, so, I mean, I, I would have expected um, it, it to be very unlikely that these Hodge numbers are ever independent of, of, of the metric. So, uh, are, are you saying that this whole Zhang paper was, was really the, the first uh, counterexample where this happened? or? Were there other examples maybe where, where it is independent of the metric or? Uh, well, um, mm, unless for the, for the almost scalar uh, setting when uh, they show that the H11 is always, uh, is a topological invariant because it's B minus plus one. Eh? Uh, and uh, so for H01, they, they completely answered uh, showing that can be arbitrary large. Mm, we tried, and they also tried to do explicit computation on other four manifolds. Uh, but as you can imagine, it's very difficult to do computation by hands. Uh, mm -hmm. So the situation is, is quite difficult to. So when you can use the theory, you can success. But if you try to do explicitly, it's very difficult. They tried, and also we tried uh, separately. Unfortunately, we couldn't success. It seems that. Uh, uh, the Kodaira Tarston manifold is uh, maybe the best uh, uh, example where you can uh, do a new success uh, to do explicit computation. They tried, and we tried also on other new manifolds which, are, which have no Keller, uh, non, also no complex structure, but we couldn't uh, success, of course. It's very difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Interesting. <laughs> Is there any, any other questions? Please just speak up. Oh, speaking. there is, sorry, there is some, some question. Sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, for four dimensional manifold, there's still part decomposition. Yes, uh, you're right. Uh, exactly. Uh, there is a paper by uh, Dragic, Li, and Zhang on international mathematics research notices and uh, they showed uh, a sort of Hodge decomposition theorem for in the almost complex setting. Uh, they consider this uh, H plus and H minus um, uh, cohomology given by um, um, formed by uh, second RAM classes uh, which are J invariant respectively J anti invariant. Okay so this means H plus as a uh, form of type 1, 1, and uh, uh, H minus is the form of type 2, 0, plus 0, 2. And they prove that uh, they define uh, an almost complex structure, C infinity, pure and full, uh, if H2 decomposes as uh, this direct sum of H plus and H minus. H minus. And they prove that on any uh, four-dimensional, almost complex, uh, compact, almost complex manifold, uh, H2 decomposes as a direct sum of H plus and H minus. In general, sorry, these, these H plus and H minus uh, are a sort of a generalization of the Bo cohomology group 
in the non-integrable context, and they proved like uh, an Hodge decomposition. But this uh, Hodge decomposition uh, holds uh, only in four-dimensional case. In higher dimension, um, this Hodge decomposition uh, is not guaranteed. For instance, you can have also uh, almost complex structure in uh, six dimensional uh, on six dimensional manifold such that the uh, h plus and h minus uh, have an intersection different from zero and also h plus h minus uh, uh, is the sum of h plus and h minus uh, is uh, strictly contained in h2 uh, but four dimensional is uh, in, some in some sense the best uh, situation and they prove this Hodge decomposition exactly. thank you for the for the question Okay, so I don't see any other question. Uh, is there a question, Rui? Yeah, can I, can I ask a question? Can you say something? Hi, Rui. I was going, sorry. Good. I was going. Uh, fine, can fine. you say something about uh, the relationship with these cohomologies of Tseng and Yao? Um, you mean the Bochan simplectic, Bochan Apli simplectic homology? Yeah, I mean, when they take these, I mean, they basically take the sum of D plus D star something. Uh, yes, uh, well, th that's an interesting question. I, I, I didn't think about it, but uh, of course it is stimulating because uh, you see, in, firstly, uh, the, this kind of, trap, of problem, sorry, uh, appears as a, uh, not a cohomological um, problems because they are not uh, uh, related to cohomology operator because d bar square is not zero. Uh, so, but uh, you, you're right, maybe that uh, the kernel of uh, such uh, uh, Dolbo uh, Laplacian, even in the almost complex setting, in some sense can be related to the, um, to the kernel of the Tseng and Yao um, elliptic operators constructed be, uh, by using uh, D, D lambda, and so on. Maybe you're right. It can be, maybe that there are no uh, uh, cohomological, for sure there are no cohomological uh, interpretation, but uh, it can be that there is a relation between the space of uh, harmonic forms and uh, the space of harmonic forms uh, using uh, uh, with the Laplacian, uh, with constructed with D, D lambda, both symplectic and both Shen and Apli Laplacian. You're right. It can be. But so, but so it has not been, uh, it's not known if there is a relationship. No, uh, no, uh, at least as, as far as I know, no, it's, it's not known. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay, so I would say, unless there are further questions, uh, let's just thank the speaker again. For a very nice okay, talk. thanks a lot. I'm sorry for the, for the inconvenience uh, with the camera. Sorry, I'm sorry. It's thanks okay. a lot for inviting me. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, and I hope to see people again next week. Uh, next week's speaker is going to be Francesco Bonetti. Okay, thanks a lot. Goodbye. Bye-bye.